Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Nicole Schmeider. I'm a digital solutions advocate and senior marketing specialist here at DocuWare. On the line with me today is my colleague, the one and only Julie Baldwin. She's our global digital solutions advisor at DocuWare. So it's great that she is joining us today. She speaks to companies of all sizes on the front and helping them navigate their digital journeys. And I know everyone's super busy this season, so we'll keep it short and sweet today. It'll be a highlights conversation, and then we'll open it up for your questions at the end. So before I jump into the best practices with Julie, we really want to acknowledge, you know, everyone on the line today has different experiences with where they're at using document management, right? So let's first define what document management is to help us as we go through today's session. So document management helps organizations process, capture, store, manage, and track documents. So when you're able to do this and you know, tightly manage your critical business information, you can then develop processes that run from start to finish in a reliable, measurable, and trackable way. And this is most effectively achieved with what we call a central digital document management solution. So that's what we're going to refer to in today's session. So take a look at the picture on your screen now. Imagine going into the new year with a clear desk, a clear mind to focus with. And we really hope that these 10 best practices set you up for success in the new year and that they help you like they help our 435,000 users every day. So with that now, let's jump in. Julie, where should our attendees start? Well, first of all, I want to start by thanking you for introducing me and thank you for everybody on the line. And also, I'm going to just start in and talk about companies. You know, companies have their processes in place and they have built workarounds to be as efficient as they can. And these processes work until they don't. So when you're moving into a digital world from paper processes to digital processes, it's really important to first identify where your pain points are. Like, let me get you some examples of, you know, something that might help get you thinking in that direction. So let's say instead of taking 25 minutes to find documents or paper files, you want to cut that time down into half, maybe even seconds. Maybe you're currently using an offsite storage unit or storage service for your document storage. And then you're realizing that this is costing the company quite a bit of money. It is very expensive to be able to do that. Instead, you could bring all of those documents into one central location, which would be a digital a digital document management solution, and you'd be able to have access to those without having to pay those extra fees. Also, let's say you're speaking to a customer on the phone and they're requiring a sales order or they want a PO, a copy of that. You'll be able to do that instantly by just a click of a button while they're still on the phone instead of saying, oh, you know, I'll call you a little bit later, you know, give me an hour or so. So this can be done immediately. Also, when you're, when you're transitioning from paper processes, you'll want to be able to keep track of the important documents that help you maintain compliance within your industry guidelines as well. But do know one thing, you are not alone. You're absolutely not alone. I speak with companies every day, and these are really the top reasons that really get them thinking, okay, we need to do something different than what we're doing today. Right, I love that phrase, you're not alone. That applies to many things in life, but believe it or not, it applies to you know, manual and paper processes as well. So that's why we're here today, right, to help you navigate your next steps and where you should go forward. So after they've defined their goals, what should they consider next, Julie? Well, now you need to identify the process or processes that are giving you the most challenge, and then you put them in priority order, you know, based on the order of importance. So it's best to really start with one process at a time because I have a word of caution. Don't think, oh gosh, we, we've been given the go ahead, the green light, we're able to go digital. That don't think that you have to do the entire company at one time. You don't have to do every process at one time. You really wanna break it down and just have the most important process first. And so the key to automating the process is it'll bring the most value and also think about that too. Where can I get the most value out of automating a process? So it could be freeing up time with your employees that are working in accounting or HR or employee onboarding or contract management or even sales orders. So let me give you some examples though of uh, some of the things that companies struggle with and it's usually in this order. 
So for accounting, let's say, when you're entering data, let's say, into multiple systems, the same data into multiple systems, or for HR, you're trying to manage files, the employee files that are in different locations. And a lot of times through acquisitions, companies have their documents of their employees in multiple locations, and that HR generalist really has the time trying to organize those and to keep them you know, compliant with the company. Or in general, just think about the chaos of the emails that we deal with every day. So the back and forth and the back and forth and a lot of these get even lost in the process. So when you use a document management solution, you know, these problems do go away. I mean, just imagine that, you know, you start with one process at a time and organically the solution grows into other departments as well. There's a little bit of FOMO that goes on. So companies have other departments that say, well, wait a minute, look at accounting, you know, they're so efficient. So it's just natural that the, the, the solution will organically grow throughout the company. All right, great. So it sounds like, you know, once you've proven success in one process or one department, you feel good about that, then you're able to use that that new mindset, like, all right, like, where can we go next from there? So, all right, so we've defined goals, we've made a priority list of processes to start with. What should we really consider next before maybe officially moving to that automation phase? Well, first, you want to keep it simple. So again, one process at a time. You know, we like to think of a document management solution as being a 24-7 digital employee. It doesn't take vacation. It doesn't call in sick. And if you need a document, you can access it immediately just from a few clicks. Also, you may have a 10-step process that you currently do every day. And if you think about it, using a document management system, you'll be able to cut those steps down to five steps, maybe even less. And so when you optimize your steps, though, what you're doing is you're saving a lot of time, you're saving a lot of energy and resources for the future. Right. So it sounds like what you're saying is it's not simply about copying and pasting what you're currently doing manually or with paper, but really taking the time to reflect and optimize those processes and steps when going digital. Mm -hmm. So what's next for them, Julie? So... Not every organization, or really not every organization at all, is really 100% digital. You know, what the best results though you, you can get achieved within a company though is, is digitizing as much as possible. So instead of saying, you know, we're going paperless, you can say we're going to use less paper. I mean, that's a more manageable term because even transitioning from paper to digital, that's a process all in itself. And so what we like to think of it as more of a day forward approach. So instead of thinking about um, the overwhelming thought, I should say, of having to bring in all of those digital files or even the digital files on shared drives or also physical files that live in a storage unit, the attic, the basement, or that storage place that you're paying to actually store your documents, as long as you have access to that, they come into your office, you bring in a file, you know, at that time, you can just go ahead and scan that in. And then that starts that digital file for you. And that gets you at least one step closer to becoming more digital and using less paper. Exactly. So, using, yeah, using that day forward approach, though. Great. And that's really addressing the reality of going digital. Like you said, it's not necessarily about like, OK, we're going to go 100 percent paperless in one shot, but really focusing on how can we use less paper starting now and one day at a time going forward so you don't feel like overwhelmed and not want to go anywhere, do anything at all. So it's it's not a race, right? It's one step at a time and this takes time in getting adjusted to. So we have to keep it human still and remember at the end of the day, we, we're just humans and there's certain ways that we need to work with and ensuring it's simple and easy to use. So can you speak more on that, Julie? Yes, we definitely are human and we are completely hesitant to change, especially if we have perfected our little workarounds that keep us as efficient as possible in our roles. However, when you get ready to move into your processes into a document management solution, those, those processes that you're currently doing manually will just become so much more effective. And that is a reality that is really achievable. Uh, just imagine having piles of files on your desk in the morning when you come in to manage and you have to enter data. Or at the end of the day, you have piles of files that you didn't get to because you ran out of daylight. So with having a document management system, you're going to be able to have your desk clean like the picture that Nicole showed earlier, a clean desk because everything will be digitized. 
So it's also important that I mention that another big challenge that a lot of companies experience is that they've you know, begun their journey. They've already started going digital. So they're using shared drives on their network and they have given access to employees to the shared drives. And there's really no way that you can monitor the access to those shared drives. So you never really know when you're going in to get a document, let's say a contract, you never really know what the top version is or what the most recent version is. And then of course, everybody has access. And so you can't really lock down what their ability is to use the system. And this is really quite problematic because um, you know it, it just makes it very difficult for uh, document integrity, which we'll talk about in a minute. And, you know, but do have to think of it this way, at least it's a start, you know, companies, at least they're starting to go digital, but they typically will hit a wall to where they just don't have enough functionality to really uh, monitor and keep track of all those things. So you really want to get a system that allows, you know, the users to not only have the tasks that are related to their specific jobs, but also everybody will have a user license that kind of restricts them from seeing certain things. Right. I think, you know, like less is more when it comes to the solution that you're going to have you and your team use day in and day out. Um, you want it to be powerful still, but have that, you know, it be intuitive and easy to use. All right. So it looks like we actually reached the halfway point and we want to just take a pause now and actually ask you all a question. We have a live poll for you that I'm going to launch. So please take a look at this short question on your screen now. And there's no right or wrong answer. We just want to get a feel for what everyone on the line is experiencing now with document management. So how are you managing your documents currently? Maybe you already have a document management solution and you're looking just for ways to optimize it or perhaps kind of looking at different solutions regarding that. You're using shared file drives. Like Julie mentioned, you're starting that digital process but realizing you might need something a bit more. Maybe you're currently using a mix of paper and digital processes, you know, you, but still it's manual, or you're using just completely paper processes only, and that's okay too. That's why you're here today. So like Julie mentioned before, you're not alone in, in any phase that you're at. We, Julie speaks to companies, you know, in very different phases of their digital journeys. So I'm just gonna wait to get a few more votes in so we have a majority here, and then I will share the results so we can kind of get a feel for everyone on the line today. So if you haven't already, just quickly pick one selection. All right, I see a good amount of votes in. With that, I am going to close the poll, share the results. All right, so just right off the bat, it looks like majority of the people use a mix of paper and digital processes. And then there's a split between document management and shared file drive. So kind of looks like we've, we've kind of addressed these different situations, Julie, you mentioned, you know, all the time people are just different, different areas, but we're all, we're here to help you kind of all move towards that centralized document solution, connecting your teams and documents together with that easy to use solution. All right. Thank you, everyone. Let's jump back into the next process. And just to recap, we set Julie up for the number six. Um, we were saying that it's not only about picking the right solution, it's about making sure that the solution and the people that are using it every day are in alignment because these are the people that are gonna be working with the tool day in and day out. So Julie, how can we help users and also IT teams be more productive? Yeah, that's great. Digital. Yeah, because we have to work as a team, right? So uh, maybe you're buried um, in piles of paper or surrounded by filing cabinets, or again, you have your documents in off-site storage. You know, maybe it's that time that you go, all right, let's just quick the badness and let's get rid of the clutter. So the answer might be just moving to the cloud. Um, so using a document management solution that has a cloud solution or to it, that it allows your IT team to be happy because that will be one less thing that they have to manage. Also, you might want to have a system too that has an on-premises solution available as well because certain certain industries require that documents sit on, on the premises, you know, on the server. So you want to have the option to um, have that as well. 
So let's just imagine you're on vacation, uh, you're out of the office, or you're just working remotely and you need access to documents. You know, as long as you have an internet connection and user license and user credentials, you're able to access these documents. So you don't have to really be in the office, whether the cloud solution is available you know, with your company or it's on the premises on your server, you will have access to those documents. And so what that does is it gets everybody aligned. You're all able to use the document management system anywhere, anytime, and your IT team will have less to manage. All right, I love that connection, Julie. So just to recap, it doesn't necessarily matter where you're located. You don't have to be where the documents are. You're able to branch out, have a little bit more freedom in where you're working, but still being able to access the documents that are most important for your role. All right, lucky number seven, Julie, what's this one about? <laughs> so what's nice about having a centralized, you know, one repository location to store of your documents, it doesn't matter what type of documents they are. So they can be HR documents, accounting, invoices, contracts, expense reports, sales documents. It really doesn't matter what type of format it is. You want to be able to access these documents by using keywords slash metadata or data points or indexes or tags. These are all synonymous terms that everybody uses. We use these every day because they mean the same thing. And so with AI coming into play in all of our workspaces, you know, when you're choosing a document management system, it really should at minimum have AI built into it because that's where the future is and that's where we're going. And so having the ability to have a system that helps you with that heavy lifting in the beginning, because getting documents into a system is really where the heavy lifting is. And having a system that can pull off those data points and automatically store the documents away without your hands being on the keyboard, I mean, that's pretty much the optimal way to go for sure. And so with that consistent keywords and metadata, you're going to have a consistent naming convention for all employees and everybody's on the same page. So they won't have lost documents because once a document gets into a document management system, it's not going anywhere because it has all those multiple points that it's been stored under. So it will never be lost. Right. And I like how you you brought up the the concept of AI and it's kind of increasingly um, relevance that it's playing today. And all industries and just knowing as you're moving towards or optimizing your document management solution that should be already built in that's what's going to help you speed up storing and indexing your documents and that's really key for you know having that consistency in the beginning is key for having quick and easy access later on so heading to number eight how does document integrity come into play next Julie yeah, well, that is really everything, the document integrity. So I have found that many companies, and we saw from the poll, you know, they are, some are using a company shared drive or they're using a commercial cloud solution, as mentioned earlier. And there really isn't a way to track these documents a lot of times, meaning that when somebody goes to access a document, they, are they really getting the most recent version of that document? This is a very common problem. A document management system should at minimum have the ability to uh, not only have an audit trail to those documents, but also provide the visibility to the different versions of the documents in the system. And security parameters can be set up as per the individual user, and this will allow people to have certain access to those certain documents, meaning that their user permissions will allow them to view the most recent version, while let's say the author or the administrator of that particular document or group of documents will have the ability to see all the way through those layers and through all the versions, all the way down to the original. So with a reputable document management solution, not only can you have and should you have version control, but you also need to have a system that allows you to set retention dates or expiration dates on documents. Like for legal documents and for legal compliance, for most companies, you are required to keep certain documents for a certain amount of time, whether it be five, seven, 10, 50, sometimes a lifetime. And so having reminders set up uh, would be nice to have that in a system, would be ideal. But you definitely want a system that has the ability to give you the opportunity to show versioning and then also expiration dates. It's very key for document integrity. Yes, I think having a tool in place that like knowing it's always tracking document changes and expiration dates, like you mentioned, almost mm -hmm. what we refer to as a digital 24-7 employee, 
um, would help me sleep better at night. I hope it would, everyone on the line, let them sleep a little bit better. Um, and then kind of keeping in line with this topic, what's another important area to consider for document control? I know, Julia, you get, get a lot of questions regarding security and compliance. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure many of you deal with contracts, let's say, whether it be from vendors or clients or partners or customers, and you might even be emailing these contracts back and forth trying to gain signatures in, in a workflow. And you might maybe use a third party e-signature platform already on its own. Um, but find out, too, that it well, we will find that it's most important and more powerful, though, if you have that signing platform built right into the system of the document management system. So you might be thinking, you know, can that can you really prove the authenticity of a document by a digital signature uh, on a contract or a vendor agreement? And the answer is yes, you really can, because a document management system has the ability to capture that e-signature, and they call that a digital wet signature, and that is what is used in the court of law, and so it holds up during a court case. And so you want to have a system that has that at minimum in in the system as well. So. You know, in the end, you definitely want to be sleeping well at night, especially if you're in charge of security and compliance. All right, Julie, we've reached number 10. Last but not least, what's the best practice we'll leave them with today? All right, well, you really want to focus on using automation in your processes, because that's why we're here today. So we began by setting our goals, prioritizing those goals, and determining which process we were going to start with first. So incorporating automated workflows might just be the answer to those. Right now, you may have certain workflows in place. Perhaps these are very manual, like the sneaker mail I was talking about earlier. And employees are spending a considerable amount of time, let's say, delivering documents through the office. Or a lot of time is spent simply tracking down the documents. Having a digital workflow built right into the document management system lets people and documents get to the right people for approvals just with the click of a mouse. Also, digital stamps allow you to have a, the ability to let, drop a digital stamp on the documents themselves and as if you're writing on that document itself. Ultimately, though, a, a document management solution is um, kind of call it a little bit of a babysitter, be good, but it's in a good way because um, we are all in workflows and we all are held accountable. Employees are all held accountable for taking care of tasks, you know, in a certain amount of time in a document management solution that can send general reminders that you need to sign this document or approve this document can be sent to you, then also back to a general reminder back to the originator of the document itself. So in conclusion, the key to gaining efficiencies is tying your tasks with your documents in one place in one central repository. This makes life a lot easier. It's a game changer for companies for sure. Well, Nicole, we did it. We're through the 10 practices. So let's, what's next? Cool. Thanks so much, Julie, for walking us through those 10 best practices. As a recap, we have a summary of all those points on the screen here for you. Take a screenshot of this now, but we will be sending an email later today with all this information. So take the time to reflect on these 10 items with your team. See how you can, if you're already using a document management solution, see maybe there's some gaps you can fill in you're missing. You want to optimize that. Or if you're not already using a document management system, keep these in mind during your research and, you know, and to help you navigate your next steps. All right. We've made it to the Q&A section, so go ahead, type in your questions now if you haven't already. But we really want to encourage you to continue the conversation. If you have any questions or comments, or maybe you want to have a quick chat, please reach out to your authorized document partner. You would have received a webinar invitation from them. All you have to do is simply reply to that or use the contact information at the bottom. Or email us anytime with your questions, contact at us at docular.com and we will put you in touch with the right person.